Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Judy WTF, what the Freud? And tonight we're gonna to be discussing parental narcissistic abuse and how it affects children, how it affected you as a child and what happened to you as a result of this kind of uh, parental abuse. So just a little bit about me and the way I think, and many of you probably know that I'm a systems thinker, meaning I like to look at how dots connect and how the system, which is usually what I call the system gone wrong, creates wounds of childhood, reactions, encodings, chaos, defenses, and breakdowns. So if you look at the mind map, you can see it and track it. So wounds of childhood create reactions, poor, horrible, negative uh, core belief encodings, and then break you down into chaos, uh, defenses and those defenses don't hold up over time and then they break down and the point is to paradigm shift you out of that mess recode you into healing and then balance you out so state of unity okay so what is narcissistic abuse how is it created and how do you know if you are suffering from narcissistic abuse and you have had a parent that's narcissistically abusive. Well, going back to my systems thinking, narcissistic system is a system gone wrong where the parents lack empathy. And instead of connecting to you and your essence and providing you with human connection, which is what makes for a healthy human psyche, they either ignore you and substitute attention for things, they enroll you in their agenda, um, they may emotionally neglect you uh, totally, or they may spoil and smother you so that you can um, basically perform for them and be rewarded when you are playing out their agenda and fulfilling their needs. So you could see that the narcissistic parent is nothing about the child and everything about them. So contrasting that, either much spoiling, so here are your toys, here are your rewards, here's your money, but you're not going to get a lot of attention from me, or just really a, a sense of general neglect, just, you know, you really don't exist. So let's track the system and many of you are already starting to think about how this type of parenting has affected you, which is probably while you're why you're listening in. And everyone, this is a call-in show, so please feel free to pick up the phone. I do love questions in the chat room, but I so much prefer to talk to you. So please do call in and get on the couch and we could discuss your narcissistic family and the system gone wrong and how parents affect uh, their children via their narcissistic uh, attitudes, behaviors, and mainly lack of connection. So I like to think of narcissism as missing an empathy chip. Most people who are in the normal range of empathy will hurt if you hurt. They may not really take too much pleasure, if at all, and maybe even get upset if they hurt you. So the rule of the game is, I don't want to hurt you. I want to better you. I don't want to stab you in the back. I want to have your back. I don't want to gain uh, brownie points because you're feeling worse and doing worse. I want to help you to grow and I also want you to help me to grow. So that would be the better game of life. And um, for those of you who do not have my book, Be the Cause Healing Human Disconnect, um, please uh, make sure that you download it. The PF, PDF is free. You can have it just by asking. You can go on my website, psychologicalhealingcenter.com. Um, you can reach out to me and get a copy of that PDF, uh, or you can buy it off of amazon.com for, I don't know, $14, $15 plus shipping, 
and then have the hard copy. So either way, it's really, really important that you learn the mind map system so that you can get a really good take on how everything connects and how everything impacts and how the system can rapidly infiltrate into the fiber of your being. Um, so let, let's break it all down. Okay, so if you look at panel number one, childhood wounds, then you will see that there's the light in the background and the shadows casting over the light. So let's say that the light is the best of your best and the shadows are all the wounds. So let's go over them again. Wounds of childhood, physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, neglect, smothering. So it's really important that you understand that the narcissistic abuse, which is really uh, uh, it's, it's a degree up because it's actually the wound of apathy. So sorry, I've got some workers in the background. So just ignore and we'll keep focusing on um, our, our, our topic. So the wound of apathy is what really is the killer. Why? Because children can be slapped and name called, not that they should be and not that that's good, but when a parent truly is not caring of the child, if that parent is not connected to the child and doesn't have a sense of uh, well intentioned for the child, all kinds of things go wrong. So I do wanna hear from you. I wanna understand what went awry in your life and how you got disconnected from and what kind of parenting created what kind of reactions in you and what kind of core beliefs. So as I was showing you, the light in the background is the best of your best. It's the manifestation of the optimal self. Now with the narcissistic parenting, um, because they are so interested in themselves and not you, what they do is they basically steal the light of you and uh, they take it from themselves. So you can see it's a vampiring system. So just imagine you're developing and you've got all kinds of um, interests and all kinds of talents and all kinds of strengths and guess who wants your strengths and talents and services and ideas and money and attention and everything, everything. So what happens to you is you develop and then you get sucked dry. Wow, I want you to hear that again. You're developing and then instead of serving yourself with this development and taking it further and bettering your life, now you've got a mother or a father or maybe both that uh, ask of you to be the little parent to the other children, for example, or to lend them money or to help them clean the house, not, not just generally clean the house, but to be their little maid, little servant at the expense of your going out and having friends. Cause what's more important is that their house gets taken care of and not that your social life is developing. Um, so can anybody relate to this? I sure hope that you are spinning your wheels in thought because we're going to look at how this impacts you and how this basically takes you down. Because when you are sucked dry by a narcissistic parent, there is no way for you to keep your light and there's no way that you're going to ever be rewarded for the good that you do, unless it's in the service of them. And let me give you some examples. So I'm sure some of you are familiar with the term trophy child. So what is a trophy child? A trophy child is somebody that a parent has groomed to perform in a certain way. And the reason that they're groomed to perform in a certain way, whether it be in ballet or the arts or uh, football or another sport or modeling or really anything is because they're going to benefit from your accomplishments. 
So instead of rewarding you for being outstanding and being engaged in something that you love to do, they have already decided what they want you to do and be. And then they groom you to do and be that. And then you become um, enlisted in their process and program and they get to live through you. So if, for example, mommy wanted to be a ballerina and she never really made it and then her little girl um, is born and then she gets groomed to be a ballerina, but maybe the little girl doesn't want to be a ballerina. Maybe she wants to play a musical instrument or paint or draw or play a sport. Doesn't matter. What matters is what mommy wants. So in this particular example, she's dragged to ballet class and maybe she doesn't really want to be there, but mom bears down on her and then she has to perform and then mom go goes to the concerts and, 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 and then claps at her performance and then uh, takes pictures, videos, and she's up on uh, TikTok and Facebook and so on. And um, instead of the emphasis being on her talent and so forth, it's all about mom. Look at my child. Look how well my child performs. Oh my God, look what a beautiful outfit I got my child. So if this is something that you are familiar with, please call in. Let's apply it to your life and take advantage of getting on the couch. I know you're in there in the chat room. So get out of the chat room and get on the phone and give a call so we can chat about it live. And in the meantime, I want you to think about the impact this has on you. When mother or father take your light and direct your light toward their needs, what happens to you? Well, let's bring in panel number two and discuss how this is gonna affect your amygdala. So you can see that panel two is kind of like cracked glass. It's like a wound, it's reactions, and these reactions are nasty. So what do you do when you're hurting, mommy doesn't care, and so as a result of not caring, um, you're in pain, you can't really um, get any empathy out of it because out of your parents because you know how can you squeeze uh, blood out of a stone so to speak so you're hurting and you're performing and you're feeling disconnected from and you're feeling the reactions which are oftentimes fight flight freeze and fawn because now we're talking about the amygdala the uh, reactionary primitive brain and when the primitive brain doesn't have yet words or power or so on, it's just primitive. So in my book, Be the Cause, I um, have a case study about this similar situation. And what happened in the case study is that when mom took over and made her daughter conform to her agenda, her daughter became a shell of a person. She started shutting down and her light was growing dim. And at the end of the performance, so to speak, um, she saw that she didn't have much of a daughter left because her daughter was deep, deeply sunk in a hole of depression. And um, I refer to this as the double dungeon of darkness. Why? Because when you're in a dungeon, you can't turn to anybody. You can't turn to your mother because she's really not emotionally there. And usually father's not there either. So you can't turn to your mother. You can't turn to your father. You can't turn inward because you feel empty and hollow and drained and insignificant. And so you start to implode, you start to shut down. So these reactions then become um, emotionally dysregulated feelings within you. Fight, flight, freeze and fawn. You can't really fight. You can't really flee unless you dissociate, which is a form of fleeing. 
you can freeze, you could shut down, uh, but that's not going to lead to any sort of healthy development. So what happens after a while is that these reactions to this kind of a narcissistic treatment, they are going to encode into the fiber of your being. And so what gets encoded in there is uh, all kinds of horrible, horrible messages. And let me um, access some case studies that predominantly point to this type of narcissistic abuse. I remember a particular case with a, um, a person who was very educated and, 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 and really had a lovely life. The problem is that this person was a human doing and not a human being. And when we got to panel three of his process, we discovered that his negative core beliefs was something like, um, I'm a nothing and I deserve to die. Now this guy had everything. He had degrees, he had money, he had a beautiful family and so on. He had his health. However, he was deeply, very, very, in a very, very dark situation, suicidally depressed. What made him so suicidal is when we looked at his family of origin, the blueprint, the mother and the father, they were so severely disconnected from him. They never asked how he was doing. They never asked about um, what his needs were. They enrolled him in chores. That was it. That was it. That was their uh, interaction with him. They told him to take the garbage out or vacuum the floor or do the uh, lawn or do the laundry or whatever it was. But there was very, if, it, if at all, any real human connection. So he became what I call a human doing as opposed to a human being. And this is how it played out in his family. When he felt that he failed his wife or his, his children, he resorted right into that and he felt that he was a big zero, a big nothing, because unless he was doing and pleasing, he didn't amount to much. Now that wasn't true in his wife's mind, but it certainly was true for him. So this is one of the core beliefs people take away from a narcissistic family. And this is what I mean by impact on a child, a child in a narcissistic home where they are a human doing versus a human being is going to take the message of I'm a nothing, I'm nobody. I'm worthless. Maybe I shouldn't have even been born. So this is why it's so important if you're a parent or a parent-to-be to do the work, the psychological work that will help you to heal so that you can uh, work through these issues and not do a what the Freud. And what the Freud means, a repeat cycle of the same old, same old. And as many of you know, this is multi-generational. So it's not just you doing it. It's your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, the culture that you were born into, and all the repeated patterns that disconnected you from your family of origin and now leave you disconnected from yourself. So I'm wondering if anybody has any questions so far and if they want to take advantage of getting on the couch and um, coming into the chat room and let's talk about effects. Let's see to everyone, how can loved ones support? How can loved ones support someone? Is that the question? How can loved ones support someone? Yes, how can uh, uh, a loved one support someone who has been affected by parental narcissistic abuse? Okay, that's a really, really good question because sometimes the effects are anywhere from people-pleasing to becoming narcissistic. So if you're dealing with somebody who is narcissistic because they've been injured and they decided to join the system and you know if you can't beat them join them you can't be um connected to your parents well be connected to your 
uh, things and be connected to your performances and be connected to your uh, anything but human beings. And that's a really, really hard person to support because in essence, they have developed what I call the narcissistic shell, the narcissistic defense. So if you try to support them, they might kick you to the curb because um, they don't know how to play uh, one plus one is greater than two, the game of synergy. They don't know how to connect. They don't know how to take in love because they've gotten so used to being wounded that they are now scarred over, their heart is closed, and they are uh, desperately trying to protect that place, that narcissistically injured, nothing, nobody, worthless, human being that shouldn't have even been born. So real hard to connect with that one. And then if on the other hand, they go the opposite direction and become people pleasers. And those are the usually the ones that come to treatment because it's usually not the narcissist that comes to treatment. It's the person that's been at the effect of the narcissist who is trying desperately to give, 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 give so that they could be loved and uh, can please others. So how do you help that person is um, please don't take advantage of their um, giving because now you can understand that they're giving to get love. And so the way you can help them is to um, show them when they're over giving and make a connection with them and let them know that you're a person that's reciprocal. That would be a really good message. So if they're giving you, um, you don't allow them to overgive and suck them dry. You say, hey, relax. Um, I've got the bill on this one. You know, you paid for lunch three times. I think it's my turn. Let me Let me do something nice for you. Or if they're constant listening, constantly listening and doing for you, just say, hey, I was just thinking how much you listen and do for me. What can I do for you? So for the people pleasers, you could help them by modulating their drive to please and their drive to please so that they can be loved. And, and, and show them that you're a little bit more unconditional than that that it's okay if they do nothing, you'll still listen to them. It's okay if they take a break from the giving, you're still gonna be their friend. So it's, it's really important that we all become growth partners for each other. It's just that when people are so injured by their narcissistic parents, starting from babyhood and childhood, sometimes they shut down their heart and it's not a pretty place to be. I hope that answered the question. Maybe give me a quick yes, no. If you need more info, let me know where you're at with, with my answer here. And I do have another question from somebody that uh, kind of ties into this. And um, they said, are there any preventative measures or early interventions that can help minimize impact narcissistic abuse on a child? Yes, absolutely. So one of the um, uh, concepts that I talk about is the double dungeon of darkness. So if you're a, a grandparent or cousin or an aunt or uncle of somebody that you see is in the hands of apathetic parents, all it takes is one person for that child to connect with, one person who can see them, one person who can be an enlightened witness. So you could be that person. And uh, children are really malleable in terms of gravitating toward connections. So you can be the one. And let's go back to John Bowlby, eye contact. He's the father of attachment theory, for those of you who do not know. Eye contact, skin contact, mirroring, attunement, uh, giving, unconditional uh, unconditional love to that child, um, understanding that their needs come first, understanding that um, you cannot take another human being and make them 
outperform your agenda. So um, I think understanding attachment theory helps a lot and not taking advantage of people. That, that's really huge. Um, so that's the problem. It's usually when you have a people pleaser right around the corner, you've got a narcissist who's figured out that you'll do anything for love. And what a good deal that is for the narcissist. Wow, anything? So all you have to do is show a little love and a little bit of uh, what I call um, intermittent reinforcement, partial reinforcement, and you will keep giving and giving and giving. And then when if, if you stop, just give a couple of breadcrumbs and um, that'll give you enough incentive to give a little bit more <clears throat> and just keep sucking you dry because ultimately you think, meaning the injured people pleaser person thinks that they're not worthy. Okay, so this is where it gets tricky. So rather than looking at the taker or the narcissistic parents as something's wrong with them, they look at it 180 degrees differently. And that's where the cracked lens of perception comes in. So they'll look at it and personalize it and think, oh, there's something wrong with me. That's why mommy doesn't look at me. That's why daddy doesn't play with me. That's why mommy's work always comes first. That's why whenever I please my parents, they're happy. But if I make uh, it know what pleases me, they're not that happy about it. Um, so if you're in, in the family system or near the family system, you can be that enlightened witness and you can reach out to that person. Um, a lot of times I find that uh, people who grew up with narcissistic parents may have a grandparent or an aunt or somebody that was kind and loving. And that person uh, usually saves people's psychological butts because they are uh, present. And remember, all you need is one person to be the light. Now, of course, it's preferable if it's mom or dad or, or a significant caregiver. Of course it is. However, um, when you're deep down in that dark hole and you, you feel a connection with another human being, it takes you out of that place of learned helplessness. Because after a while, you just learn um, human connection is not coming. Uh, human connection is just uh, something that I should get used to not having. And that's when people start getting really, really dark in their, um, in their depression. Uh, or they start getting really, really angry and they project the anger on other people. Have you ever seen narcissistic rage? So that's another effect of narcissistic parenting gone wrong. The spoiled child who's spoiled with things and um, spoiled with, with um, anything but kindness and love and connection, they start associating uh, their desires with objects. So they start sounding like Veruca in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I want this. I want that. I want a pony, okay? So there's the spoiled child. So that's the effects of narcissistic spoiling and smothering on a child. And if you think that this is something uh, lightweight, it's not. Because after a while, what happens is the child stops growing and they get weaker and weaker because it's like putting pillows under somebody's butt. They don't have to stand up. They don't have to work out. They don't have to do anything. You just make them comfortable. You give, give, give them things. And then uh, they don't have to work for it. There's no earnership. They get lazier. They get bored. They start filling their hole in the soul with objects and drugs and sex and rock and roll. And many of these children end up in severe uh, uh, depression and in a dark hole of drug addiction, and many of them, unfortunately, overdose. So if you think that spoiling is the lightweight wound, guess what? You're wrong. It's a big disconnector. So I'd like to hear from you. So any questions or 
call in. Get on the couch. Uh, yes, talk. please give us yeah. a call, 323-524-2599. And there is another question. And this is a, a good question about uh, children in school. How might a narcissistic abuse, abused uh, child be a, uh, let me read this again. How might narcissistic abuse affect a child's academic performance and behavior in school? Great question. Okay, so number one, whenever we're disconnected from, it's going to affect our cognition. People might call it ADD, ADHD. Um, I don't know if there's a genetic marker for it. I, I'm not really knowledgeable or aware that there is. But when you are disconnected from, um, you're going to get real messed up in your cognition. So let me give you several examples. Let's take the spoiled child. So what's going to happen to the spoiled child is that they're going to feel entitled and they're going to maybe bully other children and they don't really know how to play fair and so on and so forth. And so the world is built around me, 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 me. So do you see how the cognition could twist into this very, um, very kind of one-sided view of themselves in the world? So that's one way. The other way is that their self-esteem goes down. So they have to outdo other people and be better than other people. And so other people start to... Um, get sick of their bragging and sick of their showing off and so on, so they may lose friends. The other end of the spectrum is the kid who uh, tries to people please. So now they're in school and um, they're constantly being uh, uh, overly giving and overly loving, maybe doing other children's homework for them. Hey, little Susie, do you mind? Uh, uh, putting my stuff in the trash can. I don't want to get up from the desk. Oh, can I borrow your term paper? I just need to see how you structured it. Um, oh, you can, you know, do me a favor and uh, re read the, the, the notes to me because I'm my eyes are tired. Okay, so they become very easily manip ma manipulatable. And so that's how the narcissism impacts. And again, let's go back to panel three, their core beliefs, the core beliefs of I'm not lovable, I'm not good enough, I'm not special, I'm not worth it. And then how do they undo it? They try to people please. And that doesn't really work because um, again, they're at risk. If they're, if they're people pleasing, they're at risk of hooking up with the narcissist because if the other children are more on the narcissistic end, end of things then they're going to take full advantage of the situation so you can see how this gets complicated it kind of depends on whether uh, the child becomes the narcissistically um, um, narcissistically symptomatic with entitlement issues or becomes low self-esteem, uh, people pleaser kind of child. Uh, so the outcomes can vary greatly from one child to another, one family to another. Sometimes you see one person in the family who's super entitled and they're the golden child and the parents give them everything because they do for the parents, they're pleasing the parents, but the minute they want to go off on their own and do their own thing, the minute they start separating and individuating from their family of origin, parents might not like it and they may pull the purse strings right out of their little fingers and then they're no longer the golden child. That's the end of the golden kingdom. And then maybe somebody else will get that position if they comply with the parents' rules and roles and agendas. So I hope that made things a little bit clearer for you. Any other thoughts, questions? Um, and you know I prefer you to call in than put the questions in the chat room, but I'll, I'll, t I'll take it as plan B so you can ask <laughs> it in the chat room. Because I know sometimes, 
And that's another effect of narcissistic abuse is feeling like you, you're you not even worthy enough to be heard or you can't speak up or you're going to sound stupid or, you know, imagine if your father or your mother called you stupid or if they both doubled down and called you stupid idiot. Now you're afraid to open your mouth. You're even afraid to maybe uh, call into the show. Who knows? So the effects of narcissistic uh, parenting is quite uh, profound. In essence, it really leaves the child feeling very, very lonely inside. So without the human connection, you feel all alone in the world, and then you, you take your path trying to please and get people into your world or shut your heart down and block everybody out of your world and just use people for tasks and projects and sex and money and uh, favors and compliments and uh, meal ticket, however. So you could see the two ends of the spectrum, I hope, and, uh, and then everything in between, which is very difficult to describe everything in between, but you could only imagine. Um, but, but definitely narcissistic parenting is really a pathway to loneliness, a pathway to, uh, possibly objectify other people, a pathway to shutting down empathy and disconnecting, and really a pathway to being a potentially horrible parent. If you don't get a hold of your childhood wounds and start dealing with them, because where are you going to go from here? What are you going to give the next generation? How can you connect with your child if you weren't connected to? Well, maybe you can. Maybe you could take I have one patient who says to me, I just did the opposite of what my mother did to me. So with my daughter, I'm loving, I'm connected, I pay attention to her. Well, yes, but usually you have to have something inside of you that's of connectivity to connect to. So the best thing that you could do is do the work. And so I did a lot of work for you by putting together a video titled Healing from Narcissistic Abuse. And if you never want to go to therapy and never want to spend time in a therapist's office, I highly suggest that you do this video. It comes with a journal. It comes with um, the book. It comes with the video which is divided into my um, nine panels and then a lot of other um, cool cool handouts that are, are very useful and a, a copy of course of the peaceful healing dialogue which is a communication uh, tool so this is a complete healing process and you can either buy it and start your journey yourself and never talk to a therapist or buy it, start it, and then decide, oh, I think I want to talk to somebody now and process my feelings and call the Psychological Healing Center and we can, um, we could book you for appointments to process your journey. Or you could just buy a package of 10 sessions with a therapist and start the journey. So either way, whether you want to fly solo or you want to do it with a, um, a therapist, it's really, really important that you deconstruct your past so that you can reconstruct your future and genuinely be the cause of a better outcome for your life. So any other thoughts or questions about this? Because there's nothing that I could tell you that's going to um, be the magic bullet other than get aware, start healing, identify your wounds, identify your negative core beliefs, stop buying into the lies, identify them, not with them, um, recognize signs of narcissism in other people. So when a parent is a narcissistic parent, most likely the, the child is going to end up with a narcissist. So people do, and this is the most dangerous effect, and I know it's not just an effect on childhood, but it's a long-term effect. Long-term effect is that 
Um, you end up re-injuring yourself because you're doing a what the Freud. You're trying to undo the damage by hooking up with somebody who is like-minded uh, to your parents. And then you end up ripping open your childhood wounds and playing the whole sad game of being demeaned and devalued and destroyed and eventually discarded and maybe you'll go through a few relationships like this. Some people get so sick. I had uh, several people tell me that they got uh, autoimmune disease and heart problems and muscle tension and even cancer. So remember, mind and body are interconnected. So this is huge. Effects of parental narcissistic abuse hit us on every level. They hit us in the pocketbook because they drain our finances or set us up or groom us to let other people drain our finances. Uh, they drain our health because we're constantly trying to get something out of um, emptiness. So it's kind of like a never ending system of bleeding out or they will take our ideas or they'll steal our copyrighted material, our programs. Uh, I've had that done to me several times actually. Um, and so it's interesting because when you have the light, people want the light and people who are narcissists don't know how to play with light. They want to grab it to themselves and they want to deplete the other person from it. They do not understand the game of synergy. So I want to jump to panel number um, six, seven, sorry, panel number seven, paradigm shift. So you can see those bubbles coming together in the light in the center. When you've been narcissistically injured, chances are that you're going to allow somebody to vampire your light. If you've had good enough parents that love and nurture you, you're probably going to match yourself with somebody that is already full of light. So your light plus this other person's light is going to produce um, synergy. So that's another effect of narcissistic abuse. You'll probably end up with people stealing from you on all kinds of levels. So please be careful with that. And, um, and I, I, I mean it when I say that the therapy will save you money. People resist therapy. Oh no, it costs too much money. I'll argue with you about that. I'll debate you on that. When people get healthier, they're not as easily, uh, they're not easily taken advantage of. Uh, they don't have to spend money, more money on recovering from addictions that they use to defend themselves from the pain. Uh, they don't have to spend money on chiropractors and um, massage therapists to heal their psychosomatic um, disorders. And everything just gets safer and better within the person. And then they can calm down. They can calm down their amygdalas. They can reshuffle their uh, view of the world and who they want in their world and um, begin to... Um, form better boundaries. So when you have better boundaries, you're less vulnerable. When you're less vulnerable, you're less of a sucker to people who are going to take advantage of you. And when you're less of a sucker, you get to keep that money in your pocket instead of give it to giving it to people who will have their eye on your, um, your pocketbook. So I hope that this sort of brings it full circle because Narcissistic parenting gone wrong is going to affect your mind, your body, and your soul. So let's go through the list again. It's going to affect your body because you're going to get sick. You're carrying all this anger and pain and aggression turned inward. It's going to affect your mind because it's going to be confusing. You're going to feel gaslit and you're not going to know who to believe. It's going to affect your pocketbook because it's going to set you up for giving and they're going to drain your wallet. Um, it's going to set you up for um, living somebody for somebody else's agenda. So you're not even going to manifest the best of your best. 
um, sexually. It's going to affect you sexually because you might feel like a sex object instead of a soul, soul connection with your partner. So one of the ways that you know that you're suffering from narcissistic abuse is that you have now converted your sexuality to getting your sexual needs met rather than connecting to another human being. Uh, so I, I hope that I've described a lot of ways that narcissistic parenting makes you vulnerable. Um, I would still love to hear from you. Uh, we have a call. Thank you for calling in. Appreciate it. Hi. Okay. Hi. I hope I can hear you. Um, what um, What name would you like me to call you by? Steve. I can't really hear. I'm hearing a lot of echoes. Hi, can you hear me okay? I hear you okay. Okay, great. And what name would you like me to call you by? You could call me Howard. Howard, thank you so much for calling in. Maybe turn down the other volume because it's getting an echo chamber here. Okay. Okay, thanks, Howard. I just... How are you? Okay. Hi. I just like to know after being uh, emotionally abused or by narcissistic parents, how do you know when you're uh, they're gone and in the in your in your next life and you're not with another family that you the people are not using you again and it feels the same and you're afraid to accept the uh, the offering of of love or uh, do you suspect that it's uh, narcissistic abuse and you're being used rather than trying to connect and okay, get the so love? That's a great question. It's hard to distinguish whether you're being used or and you're being a sucker again or if they're genuine. Well, okay. So look, if you close your heart too hard and shut down, then they're not going to have the pleasure of giving to you. And you'll never know how to place energy because you won't practice it because you'll just be all walled up inside of here. Um, if you feel that um, it's off balance, if you feel drained and tired in their presence, if you feel that um, they're demeaning you, uh, devaluing you, if you feel that things, you know, I think that, that that word balance is really important. If there's no sense of balance in the relationship, not a good sign. Mm -hmm. what, what yeah, are, I, what signs I always sense that it was, um, uh, I was being used for a purpose. And once the purpose was uh, satisfied, I could be discarded. That's what I had when I was a youngster. That's definitely one. Okay, so you could see how you did a WTF. You did a what the Freud. You were the person used and discarded, and then you signed up for more of the same. And now you're doing the work of understanding all of this. And so it'll make you for sure less of a sucker. So now you'll you'll understand imbalance, usury, drainage body hurting, headache, um, no light. Those are signs. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it, it's very hard to, to distinguish which is real and which is not. And sometimes I've been way off the mark and sometimes I was on the mark, but most like, very often off the mark. And, also look and I couldn't differentiate. I was going to say, look at how people behave not only to you, but to other people. Um, how do they treat the waiters, waitresses? How do they treat their friends? Um, are they bragging about what they got out of somebody? Um, are they uh, able to, oh, here's a really big one. Are they able to self-reflect and self-correct? Narcissists are not able to do that. So that's another effect of narcissistic parenting on children is oftentimes the child becomes so defensive 
because they're narcissistically injured. Oh no, it's not your fault. It's not my fault. You did it. It's you, 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 you. So if you find yourself in the presence of someone who cannot own their own stuff, not really a great predictor of, uh, of a synergistic relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's the way I, I, I felt. And uh, sometimes I'm just consumed by it. And I pushed away times when it was, when it was real and when it was not. And um, uh, it gets all mixed up because okay. um, no, I just. Look, what I want you to do when you meet a person is park yourself in neutral. Don't positively project on them and give them all kinds of credit when credit is not due, nor should you negatively project on them and, t and think that they're the worst thing and now they have to prove themselves. So any relationship is a relationship of earnership. And so people have to earn your trust, right? They have to earn. Right closer. So think of panel number five, which is my metaphor for permeable, non-permeable, and semi-permeable membranes. So if you're too permeable and you let everybody in, well, you're going to get screwed, right? Because somebody's going to love the idea that your door is open for business to everybody. On the other mm -hmm. hand, if you don't let anybody in, well, they're going to go away because what's so fun about playing with a cold you know, cold, impenetrable wall. So what you want to do, right. Is, right? You want to vet people. So you meet another person, you get to know them, you watch them for a while, you see how they are, you see how they are when you say no. Do they go into a narcissistic rage? What? You're not going to lend me money? Oh my God, you're so selfish. You, you want to feel whether you're being manipulated whether you're being guilted and shamed, you know, are you being guilted and shamed into submission? Well, how, how shame on you that you won't help me when I'm down. Well, what does help mean? Well, what help means is that I'm going to move into your, uh, your house and you're going to put up with me because I, you know, I can't pay my rent this month. Well, you know, depending on your relationship with a person, that might be a little much, a little much little bit of a high expectation yeah i i just have a i just have a problem when uh nothing comes back and i or i sense that nothing is coming back and um so i shut down and i and i stop trying Okay, so if you have a decent person in front of you and nothing's coming back maybe they don't understand what your needs are and maybe you can attempt to have that peaceful healing dialogue, which is in my book and say, hey, you know, um, Sam, I noticed that, um, you know, there's so many times that you want to talk and I sit and I listen to you and it, it hurts my feelings that when I talk to you, you seem to be very busy and just, you know, get me on the, off the phone as soon as possible. Am I perceiving? I do that quite often. I do that quite often when I don't want to listen anymore, or I just I I tune them out. And sometimes I'm, it's wrong, and sometimes it's 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 not the way to do. Okay, so let's go it's, back. I, to, I have a, yeah. I was just gonna say. So before we go off on our white horse and 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 be so noble, we want to self reflect and self correct ourselves. Like, are we doing something? that's off-putting? Are we uh, demeaning and devaluing and disconnecting from others? So, you know, we want to check our behavior because maybe we're contributing to this system gone wrong and then other people are um, just responding to our own injuries. So that's why we want to do the work so that we're not just walking uh, injuries. Because I know, so I know I, I've projected a lot of my old injuries onto the new uh, uh, people, and it really wasn't them. It was it was the old, and I I have a hard time distinguishing. 
So one thing you can and, check. Yes, go ahead. And yeah. So that's that's you know I really have a hard time distinguishing um, what is it happening in the present and what's hap what was happening in the past. So, uh, Howard, I invite you to get more vulnerable with people who deserve to be more vulnerable with and just ask them. So, you know, is there anything that, that I could do more or different in this relationship that would make it um, a better experience for you? You, know, you don't need to yeah. guess at it and say, oh, I wonder if I projected too far on this person. Just... You can check in with them and say, um, Sam, uh, whoever, um, I, I noticed that you shut down when I did this. Did I do anything to to upset you or hurt you? And open it up. Yeah. Let them speak. And is, is there a time frame? I know uh, apologies for me were very, very difficult because I would never got apologies. And um, it, if... If you go and you give an apology and you try to give it an amend and 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 it's you know it's it's not timely but it's sincere and it's time and then i don't I don't get to the point where i i will it's 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 rebuffed and then I just say i'm well I'm not gonna keep trying again and get get kicked again if it's not making any oh, okay. difference. Okay. I have a new pathway for you, Howard, okay? Let's kick apologies to the curb, okay? Instead of what apologizing, is it? see if you can self-reflect and self-correct. Because let's say I do something, oh, I'm so sorry, Howard, I'm so sorry, and then I do it again, oh, I'm so sorry. After a while, you don't believe that I have morphed. You don't believe that I've grown. You don't really believe that, I care. All I'm using an apology for is like kind of like an eraser. I'm just going to erase my mistake with you and apologize and no growth. However, if I say to you, you know, I see that I was in a horrible mood and I brought you into my horrible mood and I actually blamed you for that horrible mood and I could see how um, I, I went out of control. And I became kind of sarcastic with you. And I just want you to know that I could see that I do that sometimes. And I acknowledge that I do that. And um, then you could say, let me know if I do that to you and how I could fix it. So people don't yeah. apology. They want to know that that you, you care about fixing it. People apologize. Oh, I'm so sorry for this. I'm so sorry for that. I don't care. Be sorry. But more importantly fix it yeah um you know my uh, my wife has a, a granddaughter now that's getting bat mitzvahed and uh she's not capable of going out to the bat mitzvah and um uh they really uh don't i don't have a relationship with them so they they, they really i'm not you know so i'm not making an effort to go there myself and if i went there for for my wife i would feel like it's just going to uh i will be you know it, they wouldn't care if i'm there or if i'm not there well that that's complicated because you know we don't want to be where we're not welcome and sometimes we're not welcome because we've done things to injure uh the relationship uh, but, you know, if it's a, something like a bar mitzvah, which is a one-time event, people usually only have one of those or a wedding, right. right? and you can politely go there and acknowledge the people and nobody's, you know, going to be greatly offended that you're there, then you go there to honor the person. But a bar mitzvah or a wedding or one of these events is not a therapy session. So you don't go there to apologize. You don't go no, there. No, it's not. No, it's not a therapy session. Absolutely it's not. It's not a therapy session. But, so you go there to celebrate the person. So, you you know, even if you mm -hmm. brought darkness to their life. You know, it, and, and very often, it's, it's and I, I find it, it's, it's so unfair to the children because it's the children 
that are innocent, and it's the parents that are, you know, where the issues are, and the innocent, and the and the second generation is where it, it gets very hurtful. Now listen, it gets very, very messy, very quickly, uh, generation after generation. So that's why, you know, sometimes, and I know we have to stop and the show's over, sometimes we just have to pause and stop trying to correct upon correction upon correction and upon correction, just step away from the system and do the work. And then, mm -hmm. So I know the show is over. I want to thank you so much for calling in. And of course, you're very welcome. Thank you for your help. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, okay. Thank everybody. you. You're welcome. Good night. So um, everybody, I hope this is a better time for you. I've moved the time from 8 p.m. Pacific Standard to 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard. And thank you so much for joining in and I'll see you next week. Good night, everyone. Thank you.